Hi guys, welcome back. Hey y'all. I'm back. Welcome hey. to The Perspective. My name is Raylene Inez. And I'm Destiny Denise. And we're here today on The Perspective. <laughs> I'm happy to be here because I was sick last week. She was dead, y'all. Dead. Like Two I, minutes before it was time, almost time to go in here. She was like, I'll be right back. And her soul, you could just hear it coming out of her body. I was like, oh. Uh, <laughs> she's having an exorcism in the bathroom. <laughs> <laughs> I'm okay. You are not okay. Like Maury say, now that was a lie. <laughs> I thought, man, I thought I was able to do the show. Because when I was feeling like, okay, I'm not going to do the show, you pulled up. So I'm like, I don't want to, like, you know, she didn't already came. I don't want you to turn around and go back. So when we got here, I was feeling okay. And I'm like, all right, I think I could do it. And then it was just, mm-mm. Your, your body's telling you no, <laughs> but your mind, your mind is telling you yes. Yes, I remixed it because it, for her, it was reversed. <laughs> Seriously. But um, I'm feeling a lot better now. That's good. You know, I That's got my good. slurpee. Girl. It's hot. Y'all stay cool. Try to beat this heat. For All her. right. So how was your week this week, Destiny? Speaking of heat, I've been trying to beat the heat. You know, I've been trying. My hair is not. The humidity does not. It does not. Thank you. You know, it's Look moving right now. It's moving. But when that humidity hit it, bruh, <laughs> it be like, like, like stick it to my face like it just be all oh, because you're sweating and it's so yes, hot yes like it and i drink so a lot of water for, i drink a lot of water so like i don't know i don't know i feel like the water just be coming <laughs> through my pores so <laughs> i'll be trying to stay right as out. cool as possible trying to do limited activities in this heat because this heat is it's like 80 and it's like thick I'd mm-hmm. rather it be ninety and dry than this this thick moist. It's yeah, I don't, it's like it. I don't it kind of like remind me of the South, and I ain't even been to the South, so I can only <laughs> imagine what the South feels like. Like I would love to go to the South, but I'm not prepared to go down there with that thick humidity. I don't think I could do it. My hair. That comment was hilarious. It remind me of the South, but I ain't even been there. <laughs> like this remind me of Alaska, and I ain't even been there. Like. So what the hell is you referencing it for? <laughs> Reference somewhere that you have been. <laughs> Girl, you killing me. <laughs> you killing me, Larry. Oh my god. Just, How was your week? It was hot. Um besides um Besides me being sick, um... And getting your little fancy, dude. You got your little... Oh, my little... That, your hair is, like, so, like... It remind me of, like, movies that I be watching, like, where, like... I don't know, like... But they hair be like that. <laughs> <laughs> like, not like... Okay. What? <laughs> See, I'm sounding like you now with that song. I was gonna say... <laughs> what? Take your own advice. <laughs> <laughs> oh my god that remind me okay so i was at my real quick quick funny story i was at my best friend family member house mm-hmm. maybe like you know prior to the show and her little cousins was telling each other to shut up she's like both of y'all shut up for i slap you in the mouth for telling each other to shut up and the little boy's like that don't even make sense <laughs> <laughs> and in my head like he got a point <laughs> No, we everybody just discombobulated today, but I will get back to your hair reference, okay? I'm gonna get back to that. My mind is not here Same right now. I'll get to that heat reference. I'm gonna get back to that. <laughs> All right, deal. Oh, oh. <laughs> All right, but my week was good besides the heat. Um, you know, just working, trying to get some money. You know, I gotta pay some bills. I'll sell it. I'll sell it. <laughs> Adulting at its mm, finest. For real. But other than that, I'm straight, I'm lovely, you know. I just feel good. It's a new month. I feel hey, good. Last it's one August. of the summer. Hey, hey, hey. I'm just like, I feel good. That's how I just feel. All right. All right. So this week's topic on today's episode of The Perspective, we're talking about the beauty standard. Speaking of beauty, this comes to the question of the day. What does beauty mean to you? Um. All right. What does beauty mean to me? I just kind of feel like beauty is kind of like a glow that everyone has. Like, it's always something about someone or something that attracts your eye that makes it beautiful and everybody's glow and everybody's capture of beauty is different and I just feel like beauty is you whatever like everyone has something that makes them beautiful Mm -hmm. everybody does like 
For example, Destiny. Destiny. You you gonna be my example. Okay. okay, okay, okay. <laughs> I wasn't prepared. I was a little like, oh, what's Destiny? <laughs> Come out too, my nigga. Okay, okay. <laughs> what makes Destiny beautiful in my eyes is she has a beautiful personality. She has some flawless skin. Okay? Her skin is so flawless, y'all. Oh, thank you, thank you, You're thank welcome. you. You're welcome. Thank you. And honestly, what what makes you beautiful to me is this my, you might think this is weird, but your laugh is funny as Oh, my me. God. And I be laughing because you <laughs> My nephew just told me that this morning because I was laughing at my Snapchat and he was like, your laugh is so funny. Like, it just made me laugh. And I'm like, get on my face. Like, are you making fun of my laugh? Like, is it that goofy? But I, I don't even call it a laugh. I know I have a cackle, you guys. I'll be cackle. cackling like hell. I'll be like, ah, 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 like a little bird. <laughs> it's cool. It's cool. I'll be like a little tickle me on more, I guess. But beauty, beauty Thank can you. just I be appreciate anything. That. You're welcome. But that's what beauty is. It's a certain type of thing that everyone has. Okay. The first thing that you look at, like the, the moment you make eye contact and look at it. It's okay. like what captures you that makes beauty. Yeah. You know? To me, beauty is, for me, it's two things. Beauty is how you wear your features because a lot of people, they don't, understand that you know we are all different you know we are all made like i always say we have different components same thing with with our beauty what 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 makes us us some of us have big boobs and little butts or some of us have you know no boobs and big butts and some of us have you know big noses and small lips and some of us have full lips and you know so i feel like beauty is how you wear it how you Put that on kind of like you're, you you wear your skin. You are in your own skin. How do you feel in your own skin? That's beauty to me because, granted, we go through a lot of, a lot of people have insecurities, you know? For real. So that's what, like you said, that glow, that's what diminishes their glow because they're, all, they're their own biggest critic. So they're, you know, they're more down so you don't get to see their features because they hide and they, you know, like me, I used to be a person who was insecure about certain features. Like my arms, I used to hate my arms arms like I used to be like oh my god like my arms are so big like so I used to wear shirts like this like anything above like a half right here I would not I wouldn't even look at it and my mom be like Destiny what's wrong with you like your arms are nice like and I'd be like no they have stretch marks they and I was just so over analyzing everything and nitpicking all my legs like the cellulite but I had to realize like Everybody is made differently. And then I started to realize that a lot of us are alike, believe it or not. We think we are the only ones like this. I felt like I was the only person walking around with stretch marks and the only person walking around with cellulite, you know? So once I started to embrace that and look at me now, I got spaghetti straps on and really wear my features and and embrace it and just put it out there that it this is who I am and you either going to love it or hate it but either way I have to be me you know and that's yeah. what's beauty to me another Absolutely. another um aspect of beauty to me is something internally because yes the physical fades a lot of people it's it, it's about your soul your character how you're compassionate how you're loving how you're generous that's beautiful to me because you have a beautiful soul and it outpours to the external you know it doesn't have to necessarily mean you're attractive that's where people misinterpret beauty exactly. from attractiveness beauty is something that is something that is it's, totally it's, different yeah. you know it's something real it's something raw it's something that authentic authentic and genuine versus attractiveness attractiveness is something that you know sometimes you have to put facades on like makeup and certain hairstyles and certain clothes to make you beautiful but that's uh, that's the materialistic side that makes you attractive everything about beauty is stripped of all of that you you're loving yourself flaws and all that's exactly. what it essentially is. Your eyebrows, like, y'all don't know, when I don't wax my eyebrows, I have a unibrow, okay? And it be thick as hell. So that, <laughs> and, but I can't embrace that because it be too wild. I know I, know <laughs> I said, but <laughs> it's about, you know, y'all, I let it grow. I got this hat on today, but it be like a little faint line, but I'm not about to have it straight pencil board across my face. Although that would be something different to try. For you to like, just have a unibrow? Oper Operation unibrow. Like a, kind of like a, like a no shave November type thing. Yeah, 
<laughs> he just oh. gave me an idea. Oh, look what I'm doing. <laughs> but yeah, that, that's beauty Mixing to me. Mixing up it's, ideas. It's something that you just, you can't buy, you can't doll up. It, you wake up and it's how God made you. For real. You know? I used to be insecure about my lips too because before I got braces, I used to have a very severe underbite. And I was an ugly duckling. Like now that I'm breaking this down to y'all, y'all see how, you know, my glow up is real now. But before I had my braces, I had a severe underbite. So my lip used to hang, y'all. And I remember one time I was in my <laughs> seventh grade math class and I'm looking at the board and I, my peripheral is like on point. Like it's like, it's behind. Like I could see like this. So I'm looking at the board and I see my, my classmate, Jesus, he like two seats over from me, but I could feel him looking at me. So I just turn and look at him and he's like mimicking me like, <laughs> and I was like, <laughs> like, what the <laughs> Like, so I used to do little things like hold my lip in, like, like try to, you know, do little things to hide that because, you know, people used to make fun of that. Or I used to be like, since I have my underbite, my top lip is so small. It's like a little, it's like a white person lip. It's like, <laughs> like, with my bottom lip juicy, like, you know, my people, you know, so I got the rest of my world. <laughs> but I had to that, like, girl, you know, God made you who you are for a reason. Same thing with my nose. I got a little button nose. Everybody always tell me, like, you little button nose. And I be like, damn, like, I feel like I'm on a little tissue commercial. Like, you know, their nose be red, <laughs> sharp, <laughs> <laughs> you, yeah, I was, you know, and what? I used to be so good. Like my nose not little, but it's like, what you want a big nose? Like you just have to embrace who you are. You, you know, really do. I went through that phase. I was so over analyzing. I was insecure about, about my gut. Like I used to think I had the biggest gut oh, ever gosh. in my life. <laughs> uh, my teeth, my two front teeth. Oh, when these motherfuckers was growing in, I used to be called be their tooth, and Aww. I was just oh. I, uh, what's that little rat name off Kim Possible? I used to get called Rufus a lot, man. Oh. I still do, but that don't phase me no more. <laughs> I'd be like, okay, so. <laughs> For real. Um, I was just so insecure because at the time, like, I didn't know what it meant to have, like, wide hips. I just kind of felt like I was bigger, mm -hmm. you know. Um, I was insecure with my beauty as growing up as a kid because, um, People, I was picked on. People are mean. Y'all were mean to me. <laughs> like, for real. And um, I, my mommy's always told me I was a beautiful child growing up. But I, at a time in my life, I did not see it. Because right. I used to get picked on so much. I used to think I was so ugly. Yeah. I used to really think I was so ugly, you guys. It's crazy. It took, it took a lot of looking within myself mm -hmm. for me to understand that I'm gonna always have these big teeth I'm gonna always have this invisible gut yeah. that everyone say I don't have but in my head I just think it's hanging over my stomach and I'm gonna just always look like Rufus little sister and I'm cool with that hey no lie <laughs> y'all can't see cause the lighting is kinda off but she got on the color she wearing is like Rufus pink today <laughs> It's like Rufus Call me B <laughs> But I'm, for, I'm just saying, I'm cool with that. I'm so cool with that. And I and honestly, what put me down was my, I, I was bashed for my personality growing up as well. I, I, I'm a dip, and that's cool with me. And I'm, I, I will embrace that to the day I die, because I feel like I wouldn't be me if I wouldn't be me. Like, I feel like I just have more off days and others and I'm okay with that. Mm. Six to one. Six to one. <laughs> Raylene has six off days and one on day. That's her that's her ratio. She be off six days out of the week. Like Raylene, where is your head? <laughs> where is you at? What is you doing? No baby, what is you doing? That's how it is just like, oh my God. But I'm okay with that. It's cool. It's cool. I feel you. <laughs> uh, um Second question of the day. How does the beauty standard, how does beauty play a part in your life? For me, beauty is every, is like all around me because of the field that I'm pursuing. Being a model, being a plus size model, it's more positive, the environment. It's more about embracing who you are and being body positive and just loving yourself and putting that out full fledged, regardless to who 
dislikes it or who it makes uncomfortable because at the end of the day it's you you have to walk in with that confidence you can't allow anybody to diminish what you have and and put you know try to dim your light um <clears throat> it's all a around me because it, it teaches me to really just kind of be a role model to other other people who are you know going through those insecurities that I went through, you know, because no matter what the age, a lot of people in the world have insecurities about them. So I feel like for me, it gives me a platform to be able to push out there like, look, you're not going to have a perfect smile. You're not, you know, everybody's not going to be, you know, Coke bottle shape. You're not, everybody's boobs are not going to be super perky. Like it, 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 especially in an artificial world where, now it's a lot of, you know, cosmetic surgeries. Not that I'm putting down anybody who has that, but it makes the normal people and regular women like myself, you know, look at ourselves and double question, you know, our bodies and our faces. And, you know, so I feel like for me every day, I'm just pushing the envelope and telling people just be be you. Like for majority of my photo shoots, I don't wear foundation because I want you to see my skin for what it is. You know, I don't want my pictures to be heavily edited to where I don't even look like myself. That's, you know, that's every day that I'm fighting, trying to be a natural woman in an artificial world. That's what dope. about you? That's dope. How does beauty play in my lifestyle? Um, it's besides the mascara and the eyeliner I learned how to apply on my face a year ago. <laughs> um, beauty plays everywhere to me. I mean, everything is beauty to me. From myself to my friends to people I meet every day to the graffiti I see on a wall to everything, the sky, mm -hmm. my dogs. I mean, it's it's everything. I look at everything in, how can I put it? I look at everything in a, I don't look at, how can I explain It's it? like through the looking glass. You look yeah. at everything as, you know, beauty. You see the beauty in everything. Yeah. I don't, you don't walk outside like, oh, it's ugly outside. You walk outside yeah. like, look at the clouds. It's pretty. Oh, look at the butterflies. Exactly. Yeah. That, that's exactly how I look at life every day I wake up. Even on a rainy, gray day, I'd be like, oh, look at the clouds. Mm -hmm. And I just get lost looking into them because it'd be so pretty. See, that's one of them six off days. You'd be off. I'd be calling you while you're looking <laughs> in the clouds. Raylene, what is you doing? <laughs> And I just be looking like, <laughs> I get so caught up in stuff. Like, when I be doodling, first of all, I don't know how to draw. So, when I doodle little stick figures and stuff, like, I just be, I don't know, wherever, how my hand end up drawing something, I'm like, ooh, that's kind of cool. <laughs> like, I'll be looking at it like, ooh, this is just stupid. Or, yeah. I just, mm -hmm, I just feel like beauty was everything. Yeah. Even as a little kid. Beauty is just everything. Beauty is everything. It is. It, it it definitely is. I I I get where you're coming from because I I'm, I also think like that. I, I see the beauty in everything. I try to. This is how I live my life. Every day I wake up, I make it a goal to at least identify one beautiful thing or moment or person out of each day. Because when you don't, and you always are pessimistic and negative, and you know try you to see. That yeah, you to attract you. it. So when and I've been reading this book called The Secret. So I've been really on the love you know, abundance and the law of attraction. So I just try to see the beauty in at least one thing. And sometimes I just be like, oh, I just be seeing beauty in everything. All that, like, oh, it's just so beautiful. Like, I didn't have a couple beautiful days out of this week. My summer has been really beautiful. For though. me like, too, same. Just the weather, even though it's been hot as hell. But it, it's been nice to be able to just get that sun on my skin and just feel it and just feel all the good energy and stuff. The only thing I ain't feeling is these June bugs. Because oh, I've been ducking past, and dodging like somebody. These, these uh, past couple of weeks, man, one smacked me in my face. <laughs> the other one flew in my car. I'm over y'all big old bugs. I be big ducking and dodging them insects. like the repo, man. I be... Uh, 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 as soon as I hear that, <laughs> zub, I'll be like, shh, shh, oh, shh, oh. shh, 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 shh. Because they be really come smacking in. One, that's, like, that's smack me though. in my forehead. Just, zip. I was like, ah! <laughs> A little too late for that. <laughs> like, I'm walking just in my own world. I, I think I was looking at the clouds. See, there you go. One, just, two, six, ooh, look. Zip, boom. I was like, <laughs> oh, my God. Mm-mm-mm. 
But you know what? We're going to go ahead and take a quick break. When we get back, we're going to talk about the standard of beauty. You know, secret. No. What I put? <laughs> Society and body image. <laughs> Here she go. I think it's one of the six off days. No, I couldn't read my handwriting for a second. You always say that. And we're going to talk about our hair. Are you or are you not your hair? We'll be back when you... We'll be back. Maybe you should start typing that. You think so? Yeah, girl. <laughs> Warning. Something crazy on camera. She always be. Oh, I'll be the one. Just, oh, I'll be the one that just I was always just get about to say, Okay, I guess I'll share with the rest of you guys. Then I was moving my hair and I was like, Ooh, I feel like hit the dude off Good Burger. <laughs> <laughs> Anyways, dang. All right, that's the last time y'all catching me slip up. I'm gonna be on my P's and Q's, tight, right, ready. <laughs> <laughs> and I'm the one who always gonna be off point. <laughs> but it's cool though. Like I it's said, cool. I love me for me. That's it's the beauty in me. All right. So, welcome back. If you're tuning in, we're talking about the beauty standard. All right. Now, getting into the next segment of the show What's Your Perspective? Starting with the standard the beauty standard of our society. Hmm. Okay. The beauty standard in Los Angeles is stupid. That's exactly what I put. Because I just honestly feel like why to me I, this is how I look at it everyone is in a competition to look the exact same amen amen and I don't like looking the same mm -mm. why do you think I got these two little french braids right here I don't like looking the same mm -hmm. I want to be able to you know look different mm -hmm. that's what beauty is Every be everybody beauty is different Everybody trying to get the same bubble butt, the same small waist, the same big boobies or whatever the case is. All this plastic surgery. And I'm not bashing it because if you want it, because I, it, hey, look, if I had the money because, you know, when the perspective glow up, I might do a plastic surgery. Who knows how I'm feeling at the time. And I'm not bashing it because I am playing devil's advocate. But what I am saying wait, is. Wait, 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 wait. What? It didn't make sense? N Hell no. This you're is talking about the standard. You're preaching the standard and you're saying that the standard in Los Angeles is about getting boobs, waist, and ass. And you're saying later down the line you might jump into that I'm standard. I'm just saying who knows. I'm not saying I might. I'm not saying I might not. I'm just hypothetically speaking. Because I don't want to bash something if I get it. So why even speak on it? What, so what's your idea, What's your true definition of the, the standard? The true definition of the standard for me is everybody, is, I just kind of feel like everybody's just trying to be in the same lane when I feel like everybody should be in a different lane. So what, like, you're going to jump in that lane a little bit later down the line and get some titties and then jump back out? I like my titties. I wouldn't get no you I wouldn't get I wouldn't get bigger tits. I'm about like to knock tits. you in your head. <laughs> <laughs> I'm about to knock the bun off your head. <laughs> <laughs> but okay. Maybe I wasn't making sense then, but what I am trying to say is everybody's in the same lane to be the same. I just feel like LA is so I feel like LA is filled with a lot of beauty. A lot of beautiful women that I see on a day to day basis. Everybody should look different. Mm -hmm. Everybody. There's no reason why, I promise you, I was in a mall, and I seen, like, three girls with the exact ensemble going on. It was crazy. And then, like, they was doing this to each other, like, like, low-key mad that they looked the same. Yeah. Stop looking at what social media and do you, do you. That's what I was just about to say. You know? I feel like the standard plays, with the standard, social media plays a big role part in shaping the standard. It does. Back in the day, the standard was based on what you saw in magazines and what you saw on TV. A lot of people don't pay attention to those type of publications nowadays. Everything is on the phone. Everything is, you know, you looking at your different, the different platforms. There's so many different platforms to keep up with, like, and not even just um, Instagram, Twitter, and Snapchat. You have 
you know, old school Facebook. You still have Tumblr. That Tumblr's throwback. I know a lot of people that still rely on you, Pinterest. So it's it's so easily, it's so easy to be sucked into that. It's mm-hmm. so easy to start doubting yourself and start second guessing. You know what you look like because what's praised on social media. You have to think about it. It's so it, like I I'm such a I'm a statistics type of person. I think how my brain operates, I'm thinking of statistics. So say, for instance, if it's 7 billion people in the world and a hundred and maybe 300 is liking this local girl's, you know, whatever her, her whole aura persona or these, like you say, it's a lot of girls that kind of, you know, fit into that, that little mold. But that doesn't mean that you're not worthy. You're not beautiful. You're, you know. That's what I noticed with the social media. Like you have to think about it. It's seven. It, it, it that's only maybe point three percent of a whole entire world. Exactly. Like, and that's what a part of the standard is too. When you when you're so um, locally based, it's easy for your mind to you know just think this is what it is. Like everybody likes this. But when you expand and broaden your horizons and travel and see and meet, because maybe the beauty standard in California is totally different from the beauty standard in Atlanta, yeah. in New York, in Chicago, in Texas, in Seattle. Like it's totally different. You know what? And it's so many different like um types of girls because granted we kind of fit into a category too you know it it, it everybody kind of fits into like a certain little yeah. you know you have certain people that I don't like putting labels on them because you can't put a name for a group of people. But yeah. you kind of have that same aura, that same eclectic vibe, personality, style, selection of music, whatever it is that connects you in that category. Um, and w- I feel like a lot of part of the beauty standard is the men. The men, we w- as women, we allow men to set to set the standard and kind of... Push that, you know, that certain look onto... That's absolutely true. Onto what's supposed to be beautiful. That no, we're the women. True. We set the beauty standards. It's what we say, not them. I don't... I never got how... Oh. I see men post certain things about certain different types of women. And we as women, we get frustrated at it and get bad. But it's like... We're only we're only feeding their egos when we try Absolutely to switch right. and wear makeup and wear hair and and now look at it it's so funny because for the past ten years it was about your hair and about your makeup and now all of a sudden now we're entering into you know New Year's it's all about being natural like oh I like my woman natural I like my woman this but for the past ten years everybody been running and you know dolling their faces up and getting booties and getting this and getting that for. The standard. You wasn't doing it for, you know, okay, I just want to do it for me. Because you, you can, like, for example, if you did it for you, like, it would just be like, okay, I, my, my boobs are a little small. I just want to, you know, make them fuller. Some people get in multiple surgeries and no, multiple, yeah. you know, multiple shots and multiple injections. That's and, where I was trying to get it with my first. That's what I was trying to say. When I was trying to talk and you saying it wasn't making no sense, I was trying to say that. But I guess it didn't come out right. <laughs> That's what I was trying to get out, but it wasn't coming out. It was I'm having one of them days. But what you were saying about days. But what you were saying about the whole men thing, that just ooh my God. This is what made me insecure when it comes to dating dudes. Mm-hmm. Oh my goodness. My recent ex wanted me. Uh, when we were dating the first couple of years, he was okay with my hair, but like towards the end, not not even towards the end, like like towards like the middle of the relationship, like he wanted me to grow my hair out. Oh my god, you need to get braids. Oh my god, I don't. I'm starting to like the like short hair. Da, 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 da. I still kept that short hair for as long as I wanted to, until one day what made me want to grow my hair back was I just got tired. Like the it was maintenance for me. It's too expensive to have short hair. If you ain't got money, like if you ain't got no Holly Berry money, don't get a Holly Berry cut. Mm-hmm. That's how I look at it. But um, but my ex was really trying to like tell me how to dress and tell me, uh-uh. I dress how I want to dress. Right. I do what I want to do. Because we if you women, can't fit with my style yeah. and my hair and everything like that, then you're not gonna mm, no. It's not gonna right. work. Cause I'm gonna do me and just 
me and do my hair how I want to when I feel like it. Right. And you're going to have to accept that because that's what makes me me. Right. I'm very versatile. I like to do different things with my hair. I've never done burgundy before. I think it looks kind of cute. Yeah. Definitely so, with the standard. It, it The men, it definitely takes shape on absolutely y'all need to persuading learn and because how we as women place. because we as women we don't we don't judge men because honestly i'm not gonna date a man based off of his style if i if i'm not digging your whole aura and i'm not gonna be with you and try to change you you exactly. know I'm gonna, if i like you it's exactly how you, you are, are. For who you are i'm not gonna try to you know oh your style or your hair or you know this or that like that's who you are. Exactly. You know? And it's not like... I'm not going to do no Christina Mini. What's her name? Christina Mini, how she did yeah. it. Love don't cost a thing. I'm not going to do that to a man. Yeah. Like, if I like you for you and your little corny... Way, well, however you come to me is... However you present yourself to me, that's your true you authentic gonna, self, yeah, that's how I'm going to like you for. Mm -hmm. For you. Mm -hmm. Definitely. And people... I don't know why people... I just kind of feel like people is like ashamed to hide them true selves. And that... And that's what, that's what also make you beauty too. When you just show your true self, mm -hmm. like don't hide it. Do not hide your true self. I mean, it, it, honestly, the standard also comes with. I talk about this a lot. It comes with fear. A lot of people Absolutely. they fear and and. As humans, we overthink and overanalyze. Some every people, some of us, a lot of us, I, 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 I really admire that trait in people who are very free spirited and just, you know, they're really just they present, like you say, they present themselves to you how they are, however they are, and you, you have either you gonna love it or you gonna hate it. Um, but a lot of us, we, we have that general fear of being judged or, or you know, the, the next person looking at us funny or, and in a lot of things, and a lot of times, this is a big part and it's so sad, the amount of likes you get. Mm, oh, that's not a The digital no heart. Yeah, that digital heart that I talk about. You, you know, when you, when you post in a picture that, like, you have to heavily edit it or, you know, oh, uh, that's not gonna get a lot of likes, let me delete that and let me, like... I, like I, I always care. say, I'm a statistics person. If you have, say for instance, for example, I post a picture and I get 15 likes on my picture. I take that as 15 people walking up to me saying, I like your face or I like your shoes or I like your dress or I like your personality or I like just you. I take that as that versus somebody, oh, only 15 people like my picture. Like, That's crazy. How you're being, really so, it. you know, look at it as because on the social media world, numbers are everything. That's what it's portrayed. That's the standard on social media, that numbers are everything, that likes are everything, that comments are everything. When it's not, as long as you, and shit, if I like the per picture, it's going up. Regardless, like. I like that picture. You know? It's like, up to you to tap that heart or not. Exactly. But you still take it as, you know, 20 people, 100 people. That's 100 compliments. 100 people compliment it, whatever it is you have going on. Or 10 people or 15 or, you know, whatever number. That Take that as that. Don't take it as and think and overthink it and overanalyze it. Same thing with, like you say, um... Uh, like uh, your ex was, you know, talking about your hair and stuff. As women, we overanalyze that too. Like we, like they that say, like they say, how women, how, how they say women go to the clubs for men and men go to the clubs for women. Well, it's a certain beauty standard because especially in LA, we all know how that goes. You gotta be, you gotta have the tiniest waist, the most caked up Man. face, like to be able to. You know, go out and have a good time. And that makes a lot of other women feel like, well, am I not worthy of having a good time like right. the rest of these women? I think that it plays a really big part. And a lot of these people in Hollywood are men. They're setting this beauty standard, believe it or not. These promoters, these club managers, all of these people, the, the celebrities, they little entourages, they little managers and stuff are all men playing a role in shaping the standard of what beauty is. And it's sad. And that's why I really admire Kendrick Lamar for, you know, coming out with those lyrics and, you know, really embracing your natural, your stretch marks, whatever it is that you have, you know? Because that artificial stuff, it's going to fade. It's going to fade. It's going to fade. You're not going to look the same. Mm-mm. No Speaking bueno. of looking the same, 
you know, another topic that we want to talk about is society and the body image. How does, you know, society play a role on your body image and how you love yourself? I think me it being a plus, a real, yeah, me being mm. a plus size model, it plays a big role because granted, it's a lot of people out there that are that praise, you know, me for being courageous and getting out there in that limelight. But it's also a lot of people who fat shame and you know, who are really negative and condescending on what the idea of beauty is and what the idea of how your body should look. Like, for example, me, I'm not the perfect, you know, Coke bottle, slim, like, but I embrace it because it's who I am. I, I love my thighs. I love my, my stomach. I love my boobs. I love everything. You know, sometimes I really don't like my boobs because stuff was getting caught down there. Like, I was eating ice cream the other day. Some Oreos, like, stuff was on the top. And it kept falling <laughs> in. And it was, I had to take my bra off, shake it out, shake my boobs out. Yes, I had to shake my boobs out. <laughs> and then put my bra back on and go about my day. But I think body image, we also... That we also get our eyes shaped by different, you know, publications and stuff. Their idea of what beauty is. Like, for example, Fashion Nova. Fashion Nova got regular size models modeling in their plus size section. That don't make no sense. Really? The girl's like a size zero. You know? So, it's like a lot of... Uh, I'm saying that to say... Body image comes to play a lot when it comes to clothing because we as women who are larger are not able to look how the picture looks or, you know, how the ad looked or the video or whatever we saw or whoever we saw in it, we aren't, it's not reflecting the same. Like, you know, they like the little funny memes on Instagram and stuff, how they say when you buy it versus when it come, it looks totally different on your body. And I was explaining this to my best friend. Our eyes play tricks on us mm -hmm. when it comes to our bodies and how we see it. Like the movie, for example, Shallow Hal. That's the perfect example of your eyes, you know, seeing something totally different than what is perceived. Especially how we see ourselves. I remember when I was bigger, I'm going to share this. I don't know why, for some reason, when I looked in the mirror, I felt like I seen the body of Janet Jackson. <laughs> I, I swear, and that was because I was in denial. My eyes didn't want to see my body. My eyes were projecting a totally different body shape. I kid you not. I used to always buy clothes that were smaller than... You know, what was my actual size? And I'll be like, you know what? I'm going to lose some weight and I'm going to fit it. Like, it, it's going to fit. It's going to fit. And for so long, so many clothes built up that I couldn't fit to where I had to give it away. I had to give the clothes away. And then, fast forward a year and a half later, I'm fucking small. And all my clothes are gone. And I'm like, I, I, I shouldn't have gained them clothes away. <laughs> like, what the hell was I doing? Like, this was the, the, the weight that I was supposed to lose. So, our eyes really play... They really do play A tricks. major part. That's where you really have to really look at yourself in the mirror and take off that that mask of what you want to be and look at who you want to be. And that's when you have to tell yourself, if you want to be that person, that's where you have to put in that work and starting to love yourself. And self-love involves taking care of your body. When I was bigger, I didn't love myself. My dieting was so horrible. I fed my body so much junk and just stuff that I didn't need. And I don't know why I, I fed myself that. Thinking back on it, you know, it's like, oh my God. But uh, that's a part of the body image too because granted, I'm not tiny. I'm not, you know, super like a size eight or anything, but I'm healthy. I'm taking care of my body. And that's what matters most with exactly. the body image. You know, you're not going to always be tiny. That doesn't always mean you're healthy because it's smaller people who are unhealthy, you know? Right. So that, that and, and that's where the standard comes in that the smaller is, 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 is it's more attractive. It's, that's where the attractiveness comes in because... Granted, a lot of like a lot of men, they like smaller women. So that's where a lot of bigger women develop insecurities in the love in the love area because they feel like they're never going to find love unless they lose weight and they develop, you know, issues and depression and so many other things that 
adds on top of that because you are not loving yourself. You have to love yourself first in order for Absolutely. somebody to love you. That's where body image comes in. It's all about that self-love and that self-confidence and having that strength to walk through a room and, and present yourself as the beautiful woman or man because men have insecurities with body Absolutely. image, too. Absolutely. That you are. You know? And this is not just for this show is not just for the women. It's also for the men, too. Just want to let Definitely. y'all know that. Because we do have a lot of male viewers as well. But I feel like with body image, I feel like with certain males, like, you know, they they are hard on themselves. Like Yeah. Um... When it comes to the standard, because we as women as well, we set a standard for what is deemed attractive to us. We do. In our eyes, you know? And grant our our components are a little bit more spread out. Like for example, I, I don't I at first, I'm I'ma speak on this. At first, I used to be the only one in my crew that used to date chubby men. And then I used to tell my friends, like, chubby men need love too. Like, it's okay. Like it's fine that they're not going to kill you. They give just amount, the, the same love as a regular, you know, buff, skinny dude. And, you know, some of my friends hopped on the chubby train. I'm not currently on the chubby train. I got some friends that's currently on the chubby train. Choo-choo! But <laughs> ain't nothing wrong with it. That's why I'm like, you know what? It's all good. It is all good in the hood. Everybody need love. Absolutely. What about you? How you feel about the body image? Um, I just now, I just kind of feel like this. Who was society to tell me what is thick, what is you know, what is what? I just kind of feel like y'all. I just not see y'all, but <laughs> I just kind of feel like you don't have the right to tell me how my body should look. Definitely. Period. So. I love my body. It took me a while to love my body because I was insecure with myself. I feel like everyone has insecurities, and I, I don't care what anyone says. Everyone has an insecurity within themselves because we we overthink, we overanalyze ourselves. And social media plays a big part because that's where the whole the society is right here. At the tip of your fingers. Exactly. And they're watching your every move. Mm-hmm. That's how, that's what it is. They're watching your every move. And some people might like it. Some people might not. Mm -hmm. Some people might think it's the most beautiful, most beautiful thing ever. Some people might think it's the most disgusting thing ever. Mm -hmm. But the key to, so, to this whole, you know, with how society view us in, their, in our bodies, don't let them be the, don't let them be the judge of you and yourself. Mm -hmm. You have to be able to embrace it. Marilyn Monroe was a size 13. Whoop, whoop. I'm a size 13. Hi, hi. I'm a size 13, and me and Destiny are totally different. And we totally different. We wear the same size, but we look different. That's we, another thing, too. Like you, you're, We wear the exact thing same size, and we're so different. Mm -hmm. But at the end of it all, I just kind of feel like society, y'all don't have a right to tell women or men what's beautiful or what's this or what's that everyone has their own beauty everyone has their own body and everybody should embrace their body because this is your this is this is you your vessel you it this is all you have is your skin yeah. yourself and you have to love it you yeah. you have to love it a little bit more every single day you have to give it what it needs to go about your day everything Definitely so. Real quick, touching bases on the social media thing. I think another part that we we get decepted with is, or not decepted, I'm sorry, deceived with, is you have to realize you're only seeing a split second capture out of someone's whole yeah. image or so my one pose like this could be totally you know different versus you see me like this all day slouched you know yeah i'm not like this all day every day 24 hours 365 around or my face is not always just sometimes i'll be looking dumb as hell like you might catch me like looking dumb <laughs> Always looking sometimes dumb. my hair is not moving like this. So it's you know, or sometimes my angle is not always, you know, like uh on point. You have to realize that and learn not to 
when I when I'm on social media, I do not. I'm like that's their life. Like I do exactly. not like if they see if I see something cute y'all got on there, I'm not be like, oh, where they got that from? I'm, I wonder where they got that from. Let me. Hmm. Yeah, I I let never bash. Double the tap, next you know, person. but I never not even bash, but oh, her face looks so pretty. I wish my face was like that. Yeah, like I never do I wish that. My body was like that, you know, because. You're never going to be happy. You're never going to be happy because you're always chasing. You're always riding someone else's coattail. You're always trying to jump on someone else's train. It's t- like, for example, when you see what somebody else have or what somebody else doing and you try to do the same thing, it's not going to work for you. Do what works best for you. You know? Yeah. Like, every everybody's different. Everybody's different. So you can't... What one person's way make your own way and i guarantee you you go and you go you'll be all right you gotta just do what's best for you definitely your self your it body. shows when you're when you're happy with yourself and you're self-confident and you love yourself it shows for real when you walk into a room it shows people know they feel it they they you attract people you really do you really do. And I learned that because when I was so pessimistic and down on myself, I I, re- I didn't attract people. I didn't. People stayed away from me. But now that I'm more, you know, vibrant and stuff, people, you know, they come. They, they come. Sometimes it's a little weirder than others, but they still come. <laughs> I just just feel like you got man. At the end of it all, can't nobody tell you what beauty is to you. You just got to love yourself. Mm-hmm. And a li- I feel like the next topic that we're about to go on to bases with, I kind of feel like a lot of, I'm going to just say, a lot of African-American girls had this problem growing up, and it's regards to our hair. I am not my hair. Definitely. That is our next topic. And I kind of feel like with, you know, African-American women in our hair, I was very insecure about my hair. Yeah. I was very insecure about it. I wanted the mixed hair. I wanted that so bad. Mm. When you get in the shower, you know, it curl up and you mm. all you gotta do is put some conditioner in it and put it in a ponytail and a curl. Mm. I wanted that hair so bad. And it, and then having a mixed cousin made me feel even more like shit because I knew she could do it and I couldn't. Oh yeah. So I was always insecure about my hair. I, and that was honestly the biggest thing that I was made fun of in school was my hair. Mm-hmm. How I wore it, the different styles that my mama put in my hair, I got made fun of until about the ninth grade. And i never forget, I had this, no, it was the ninth grade or eighth grade? I think it was eighth grade. And this boy by the name of Brandon, he used to pull my ponytail, like ponytail, ponytail. And this is actually when I first got suspended, I never forget. I really just punched him in the face. Like, I just took my hair out of my bun. I said, look, like, this is my hair. Leave me and my hair alone. Like, I just, I got so frustrated because, because how my hair was, it used to be, like, in a puff. And I used to think the little puff was fake. But it's really my big-ass Afro puff. Like, Mm -hmm. leave me and my hair alone. Stop pulling on it. Stop. He used to, like, stick pencils in my nappy shit. Like, I used to get so mad at this boy. Like, he taunted me like the whole beginning of my eighth grade semester and i never forget i just socked him in the face and said leave me and my hair alone like leave it alone right. like, it hurt i got all these bobby pins in my hair yeah like all these barrettes and balls and shit <laughs> like, poor ray ray but that was my biggest insecurity about my hair was it used to get made fun of because you know us African American women were known for having nappy hair. But as I got older, before I used to um before I cut my hair into short hair, uh it was for a cool like six month period, I was wearing weaves and going to the shop every two weeks to get my hair done. And when it was actually kind of somewhat healthy at this point, and one day I washed my hair and I seen my hair for its natural texture. And I seen that my hair can curl in the water. But it's going to puff up afterwards. But I didn't know at that time that there's certain hair products that you can use for our type of hair to let our curls last throughout the day. Mm -hmm. So when I kind of, um, what made me kind of, this is what kind of made me grow my hair out so I could really see my hair for what it really is and its natural texture was kind of when my perm was somewhat growing out. 
and I washed my hair and I seen how kind of like I had a little jerry curl kind of. Mm -hmm. And that's what made me go, okay, Raylene, you need to cut all this perm off and grow your natural hair out and kind of see because the ends were real bone in straight because of the perm. But I can see my growth and how kinky curly it was. And I could just, I was just like, it kind of gave me life. And I was like, I need to <laughs> experiment with my hair. Mm -hmm. <laughs> so I'm experimenting with my protective hairstyles as we speak. But I just kind of feel like ladies love your hair. Love it. We don't need to have the next lace front. We don't need to have... I'm not bashing them either because I want one. But what I'm saying is we don't have to wear lace fronts all the time. You know, that's not always... That doesn't have to always be your definition of beauty. Like, wear your real hair. Wear it. Embrace it. Love it. Because it's, 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 these ha the follicles, the hair, is still a part of you. Mm. Your, how your hair naturally grows and how it... However it turns out, that's still you. And you have to embrace it. You have to love it. Because at the end of the day, if nobody on this earth is going to love it, you going to have to. Because it's a part of who you are. So I'm not just saying this for, you know, African-American women. I'm saying this for all the other women. Because I've had Caucasian friends come and touch my hair like, I love your hair. And I used to be like, I want your hair. They'd be like, no, I want your hair. I've had people in high school tell me that. Because and I, I feel never like understood our why. hair because we're able to do, do certain, so many yes. so many things. Our hair is just like us. Our hair is a reflection of us. Black people, we lit. Our hair lit, skin lit, all that shit. No, I'm just kidding. <laughs> but for real, our hair is able to just do so it, it reminds me of dimensions. It's just it's just so like cool. But um where hair comes to play into my life, I feel like I've always had a good texture of hair. My hair's always been thick and long. Um, I hated that my mom permed my hair. I, I really, I'm, I, I really didn't have a choice as a child, you know, because that was the beauty standard. Mm -hmm. That was Same the beauty here. standard for hair growing up, you know. You, you, you know that straightness, especially for in a black household, if you did have, you know, nappy hair, like, or if your hair was, you know, kinky or whatever. But, um. Oh, I lost my train of thought. Bloop, get it back. Hey, got it. Um, <laughs> when my mom permed my hair, so I didn't really have a choice. But as I got older, once I was like, you know, out of high school, I was just like, you know, no more. I don't want, you know, my hair permed. I'm going to do this naturally. Um, so I stopped using ha perms in my hair. And then once I got 20, I chopped it. I chopped it. And... It, it grew back. Uh, it's had its little rough ends in between there because of stress and other components. But for the most part, my hair is like really like it's like between 4B and 4C. For those of you who don't know, those are hair categories. It goes A, B, C, D. Um, a being curlier. It goes from 1, 1A, one B, C, D. That's like thin straight to 4, which is the curly How side. How do you know that? Um, you ain't never seen good hair, girl? Anyways. No. Um, I've never seen Yeah, that. the four category, that's the curly, kinky category from curliest, the S curl being A, D being your kinky, kinky, you know, the kinks, um, the coily kinks. Uh, as I got older, uh, I started, in, I, I never wore weaves in high school, but once I got older, like, once I got grown, I started, like, doing half weaves, and then I started, like, I upgraded to full weaves. Um, I just want to touch bases on this. It kind of grinds my gears when I hear people say that black women are trying to keep up with the European standard by wearing weaves let me make this clear I don't want to be white dear white people I don't want to be white like okay because I wear my weaves and because I do my hair in certain styles and I'm pretty sure a lot of other women can relate the ones who I wear can. the lace fronts Absolutely. and things like that be being constantly told that we're trying to be white or anything other than black some of us like that long some of us want to feel like Rapunzel some of us don't have the capabilities of growing our hair well I the, you know what I mean. Women, some women don't have the capabilities of having that long hair or even the texture. Some of us don't want to. Me, I wear weaves because I don't want to burn my hair out. I don't want to keep yeah. flat ironing and pressing my hair because, like I stated earlier, when it's humid, my hair is like poof. Okay? And that's not cute. And I don't want to keep applying different products to, you know, make it burn out and things like that. But what I can speak on is. 
when you wear your weeds, ladies, like every do everything in moderation. That's a part of loving your hair too. I let my hair breathe. I do protective hairstyles like braids and different. YouTube is your friend, ladies. You will learn a lot of stuff from YouTube. Cause I learned a lot of different protective hairstyles that I could, you know, rock without having to put my weave in. And another thing that I was explaining to my friends, putting it into a statistics mindset. All that money that we're putting into weaves and stuff, why not slash that in half and maybe take $50 and invest in some good hair growth products, some good products to make the texture of your hair nice, you know? Naturally, of course, natural products, you don't need all them chemicals in your hair, but we can, you know, migrate from spending so much money on the big hair industries and investing in more black-owned, because it's a lot of black-owned hair care products that can help our hair it's for real because i use them you know i use tea tree or i use different uh hair grow wild growth i use different you know wild growth is your best friend it's so many different components and different businesses that target like you said african-american hair to help us be able to thrive and flourish um i remember i seen uh it was a festival in new york i believe and it was called the curl fest and every single body black woman was rocking their natural curls, whether it was big curls, short curls, kinky curls, S curls. Everybody was embracing their hair, no matter what type That's of texture. Dope. And it was just so beautiful to see they had their daughters, like just everybody. Because like you said, growing up, we're told that our hair is too wild or our hair is, you know, untamable. And even in this day and age in society, it still is. It's still like that. And it's sad. That we're not able to just be us and wear ourselves. And that's what I commend women women for doing. For pushing the envelope and just embracing their naturalness. Because that's what beauty is at the end of the day. Yes. Just embrace that beauty. Exactly. Whether it's your body, your hair, your style, your smile, your eyes. Embrace that. Because that's what makes you you. Beauty is everything, ladies. You have to love yourself. Because at the end of the day, if you don't love you... No one else is. Yeah. You have to love yourself a little bit more than everything mm-hmm. that's around you. You have to be able to embrace your flaws, embrace your insecurities, and just love yourself. And I just can't stress this mm. any, like, longer because you have to just love yourself. And that wraps up for this week's episode of The Perspective. Please be sure to tune in. Make sure you guys continue to listen on YouTube, SoundCloud, and and iTunes. Please be sure to follow me, Raylene Inez, with one Z on the Twitter, two Zs on Instagram, Raider Rose with three A's on Snapchat. Destiny, tell them where they can find you at. You can find me on Instagram <laughs> at Destiny Denise with three E's on the end and Snapchat and Twitter, Destiny Denise with two E's on the end. Thank you, my friend. <laughs> All right, that wraps it up for this week's episode of The Perspective. You guys have a good one. We'll see y'all next week. Bye. Bye.